Good morning and God bless you. Thank you for joining with us here this morning. Perhaps you're visiting with us. We are delighted to have you and we say welcome and trust that you enjoy what you hear. Praise God. We wanna start with prayer. We wanna to continue to pray for our nation that is experiencing unsettling times. We wanna to continue to pray for our president that God would navigate his steps. And we wanna pray for our local community here and also Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and our brethren in particular. Praise God. Perhaps you have a special unspoken request. This is a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the power of your spirit and the roadmap of the word of God. Father, we pray for our nation at this time and our president that you will continue to navigate his steps. And Father, we pray also for our community that you will open up doors of opportunity for witness and influence in our localized community here. Father, I pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church, my brothers and sisters, you will open up the windows of heaven and pour out provision, protection, and your presence. We ask all this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, amen. Praise God. Several announcements that I wanna make is, tomorrow, of course, is going to be Father's Day. It's gonna be the very first time that our service, uh, our church is gonna be joining together for 11 a.m. service in over three months. We are excited about this. Praise God. To those of you uh, that have found yourself either in quarantine or some degree of sickness or not feeling well over the last two weeks. We're asking you to take special measures to, uh, to be careful, to um, be tested before you return to the congregation, take special safeguards. If you're feeling ill or have been feeling ill, uh, please understand the sensitivity of this. Just stay at home and other service as a safeguard. Um, also know that when you arrive at church tomorrow, everybody's temperature will be read. Uh, face masks will be provided if you so choose to wear one. It will not be mandatory. There is also hand sanitizers throughout the facility and the building is disinfected before service and immediately after service. We're doing all of these safeguards to ensure um, a place of safety for not only our church, but our visitors. Praise God. Looking forward to having a great time in Jesus' name. I want to draw our attention here uh, to the book of Deuteronomy and some important scriptures that I want to read, read in your hearing. And we're going to start in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number six, and we're going to start reading in verse number four. The Bible said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thine soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And then verse number nine. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thine house and on thy gates. And then we are going to go in the same chapter to verse number 20. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come saying, what meaneth the testimonies, the statutes, the judgments, which the Lord our God commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, we were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all of his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence that he might bring us in to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God 
for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. Praise God. Kind of a lengthy reading this morning. But I want to talk about when your testimony comes home. When your testimony comes home. Of course, this is a uh, infamous passage of scripture because it begins with Deuteronomy 6 and 4, which is a phenomenal scripture that relates to the monotheism of God and the oneness of God. When it said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And then as this continues to unfold, we see that the scripture talks about that the generation that came out of Egyptian bondage should talk about the things of God, the commandments, the statutes, the testimonies, the goodness of God. When you're in your house with your children, when you're sitting down, when you rise up out of bed, uh, when you're just sitting around, just maybe at the kitchen table, the, the illustration being provided for us is revealing to us that giving our testimony and talking about the things of God should be a way of life. It shouldn't have to battle the sound of a television. It shouldn't have to battle the sound of an Xbox. It shouldn't have to battle the sounds of modern music or anything of, mod, of this modern world that may find its place in the modern home. This is why we believe in having uh, extreme boundaries with having any type of influence from the outside world into our homes, lest it be a place of competing with the word of God, the statutes of God, and the testimonies of God. Further, the author talks about that we should write it on our, do our doorpost and write it on our house. Can you imagine walking by somebody's house and seeing scripture written on their fence and written on their house? Although I kind of think it's cool, uh, it might draw ridicule and might be termed as being a little weird. I've seen people driving down the road with scriptures uh, on their car, um, and I really didn't think too much about it. I think that there's probably a better way to reveal your testimony and your walk with God than having to write on the side of your van, turn or burn. However, such as it is, God was trying to make the point that the word of God, the testimonies of God, and the things of God should be a way of living. Not just going to church, not just going to a centralized location, be it the temple or the synagogue, but in our homes. It should be upon our lips, it should be in our hearts, it should be in our minds, it should be things that we're talking to our children about all the time. And this is why. In verse number 20, and when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, what meaneth the testimonies? These are the exact same things that were being artic articulated while we're rising out of bed, sitting in our living room, sitting around the kitchen table. Basically, everything is attached to God. But in time to come when thy son asketh, what, did this, what does this mean? You know, when your children are six months old and in diapers, they're not going to have a lot of questions. When your children are three and four years old and you're still in control of when the lights go on and the lights go off, there may not be a lot of questions. But the time will come that your, church, your children, not necessarily challenging in an evil way, but actually wanting to bridge the gap of understanding for themselves. What does all this mean? What do the testimonies mean? What meaneth the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments? which the Lord God has commanded you. What that is revealing to me is the testimony of your children is not necessarily going to be the testimony of the parents. The understanding of the children is not going to be the understanding of the parents. And so your testimony, your reasoning for bringing the word of God and the ways of God right into the way that you live providing a lifestyle for your children is going to be challenged. I don't view this as a pastor as a negative thing. I view this as a pastor as a necessary thing. In order for us to properly transmit this to consecutive generations, be it children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, there must be that moment where children 
totally on their own without fear and without any threat for asking the question, need to ask, why is this so important to you? Tell me more about this. Help me to bridge in my understanding your testimony into becoming an explanation to me. This is a moment of definition and a moment that must come and one that we should welcome. It continues on. Then thou shalt say unto thy son or unto thy children, we were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all of his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence that he might bring us in. What you are demonstrating and revealing to your children is the power of the supernatural. This is a supernatural demonstration. This isn't just some cookie cutter, um, biblical, religious explanation to your children. This is a living, breathing testimony to your children that I would not be where I am and you would not be where you are had it not been that God brought us out with a powerful and mighty hand. He, he did fabulous miracles. He turned water into blood all kinds of manifesting of things, putting pressure on Pharaoh and on, on Egypt to release God's people. But it was God that not only did these miracles to bring about our release and our exodus, but it was God's goodness and his grace that brought us into a place of living in houses that we didn't construct. And now we are cultivating and reaping the benefits of fruitage and vegetables and food in the domestication of animals in fields that we did not plow and we did not cultivate. That was all the goodness of God. So God is a God that not only delivers, but God brings into blessing. What a great and a glorious God. And then in verse number 24, and the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God, for our God is good for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. And so when your, your children ask, why are we going to church every week? Why am I watching the pastoral devotions every morning? Why are we having to do, to do ABC? Why are we not allowed to do some things? Why are we doing? Everything is attached to the power and the purpose to my testimony. In our household, I remember um, very early on our children, my wife and I, of course, being raised in a pastor's home, um, it was a great sacrifice for my children because it was God 360, uh, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, 24 seven, um, all the time, everywhere. And our house was going all the time. And so my children heard this at a very early age and they had a good balance because my wife was raised in this. She received the Holy Ghost uh, when she was six years old. She was baptized when she was six. I, of course, came out of the world when I was 30 and received an incredible testimony. But there's going to come a time when your children are gonna ask, why are we doing all this? Why do I have to look this way? Why do we have to dress this way? Why do we behave this way? Why can't we have this in our home? Why can't we do this? The reason, is simple, direct, and it's right. Because God has brought us out and brought us into a position that we are blessed. And we are people that re are representing an invisible God that has all power and has chosen us as a chosen generation and a royal priesthood that we represent him in the earth. And so brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, and moms and dads, it's not all that we can't do this and we can't do that and we can't go here and we can't go there. There's a much better explanation. God has brought us out, the God that has all power, 
all glory and he's using us. And God has chosen that he wants to use our children. And so these kinds of opportunities, when our testimony comes home, it's a perfect time to share the good things, the great things, the glorious things. It's an honor and it's a privilege. God bless you. Thank you for joining with us. To all of our fathers that are watching you, watching this morning, happy Father's Day. We look forward to seeing you Monday morning.